Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Good morning or good afternoon, whatever time it is out there that you're listening to this podcast. Hello Self is a podcast that helps you, our purpose is to help you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans and get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf because now is the right time to start implementing them. I am so excited to bring to you, I am your host, Patricia Leonard, and I'm so excited about my guest today. He's got a great story to tell, and he'll give you many strategies and tips just in telling his story um, of life about how you might get through some of the times in your lives or things that uh, resonate with you. because. Like I said before, I believe that in every story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. Mateus, say hello. Oh, uh, and then I'll formally introduce every everybody after I'm going to give him a chance to say hello to all of you. And then I'm going to read his bio and then turn it over to him to share the real story. <laughs> okay, Mateus, say hi to our audience. Hi, Patricia. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me today. Oh, yes. We're so excited. And I have to say that uh, I just recently met Mateus. We both have an interest in TV, and we were at a local studio here in town, both of us stepping into this idea of creating our own uh, television show. And some of you may already know that My television show is High Heels Cabaret, and it's a variety show. But Mateus will tell you more about his, perhaps, or his interest in TV and film. So I'm going to read his bio that he sent me, and then, like I said, I'll let him take it from there. He says in his bio that my name is Mateus Clarado. I was born in Brazil and moved to the U.S. when I was 19 years old, initially here as an exchange student for chemistry. Now, I told you chemistry, and I met him at a TV shooting, (laughs) but we're going to see the connection of all that. He says, I fell in love with the media industry and couldn't convince myself out of immigrating here. And we'll talk about more about that hello self moment that caused him to say, I'm going to do it. Let's see. Back in Brazil, I studied chemistry education. In the U.S., I made rum in Key West on my first summer and eventually became a sommelier. And I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but I did look it up and it means something like a wine steward, for those of you who maybe don't know either. But he did that in California while working at restaurants as he returned to school. We all do a lot of things to get where we're going, and that's one great lesson that he's teaching you here. Um, If you have a dream and a goal, look at all the opportunities to make that dream happen. There, I earned an associate's degree in film. During the pandemic, I enlisted in the Army. Thank you for your service, Mateus. Where I worked right where I work right now as a chemical specialist. I am complete completing my bachelor's in biochemistry and another in film and media this year when I leave the Army. So he'll be leaving the Army and moving toward his film industry. I am going to think more about the theme of following the signs. So I, when I interview my people, I always ask them, 
what are the signs? And I ask you, audience, what are the signs or what are the moments, the hello self moments that help you transition to where you're going, even though it might seem like a very unlikely course? So now that I've introduced Mateus, I want you, Mateus, to tell us the real story about your life, how you got here, and your dreams and your goals. Hi, Patricia. Yeah, one thing I really love about the Hello Self and what you've been talking about here in in your podcast episodes is that the idea of following the signs and also turning dreams into plans, making sure they can make uh, turning them into reality, right? And then I think that was the most Hello Self moment was when I started to notice that there were opportunities coming along that were making sure that I could turn dreams into reality. So basically, as I was growing up, I had this dream of moving here. And I I always loved film and TV and media. I grew up watching a lot of films and I loved it. But in, initially, it was just more of a, a dream or maybe even a fantasy. And then as time went by, things became more reassuring that was a possibility. And then I never stopped believing that it could be a possibility, even when I didn't know how to make it a possibility. Mm. Learning English was one of the things I could do to throw myself out there, start going towards the direction that I wanted uh, back when I was a, a teen in Brazil. But it wasn't until I had like responses from my environment that I was on that right track that I really engaged more in that. So Things like the opportunity to come here as an exchange student came out. And then it came out to to bring students from Brazil here for a year, but it was only for chemistry and science students. And then at the time, I was initially beginning, just beginning my chemistry degree in Brazil with a focus on education, because that was another passion I had at the time. And I was doing really well with chemistry in high school. And I thought, I'll go this way. And then they go, lucky enough, there was this opportunity to bring the students that were in science programs to come visit America for a year with all expenses paid by the education ministry in Brazil. Yes. So one of the, that was one of those little selves when you're doing what you're feeling your gut, feeling your intuition and listening to that and going for it. I knew I, my dream was film, but I also knew I enjoyed chemistry a lot. So I went for that first because I felt like that was the more reasonable path to take at first. And then I had that response that now we're giving scholarships to students that are doing chemistry to come here to the U.S. And then that kind of brought me closer to the film dream from the beginning. So that was one of those moments. So I guess what I want to say is that as you're following your dreams, that things will happen in a response that will show you how to uh, make them more of a reality than rather than just a uh, fantasy in the beginning. And then I was just paying attention to those. And then you get a little better at recognizing those things once you start to believe it. Yeah, that is, you just said something because I was going to bring that up. You said there are two things that really brought you to this moment where you are today in your life and career. And you said opportunities or one. And I think that's the, if people look for opportunities, if they have a dream or a goal, even you said a fantasy. I love this from your childhood. And so listeners, listen to all these things. If you had a fantasy from your childhood, that might be a sign of something that is in your soul to express. So just think about that. I like another point that he brought up that that Mateus brought up that's so critical. And look at the opportunities, follow the opportunities. And the exchange student helping other exchange students, learning English, all were things that started setting him up for this path that he had fantasized about. And then he said one more thing that you must remember And these are all tips and strategies that Mateus is giving you just about his own living so far. Even though some might say, you better go get chemistry because you'll never make money in the film industry or it's too hard to break into. Don't listen to naysayers. He says, believe. You must believe 
that what you're after, you can manifest. I look at all the things and only the first three or four minutes that he's already given you. So I just wanted to highlight like those, Mateus, because those are so critical. And that's exactly what I talk about in my Hello Self book is we miss those moments. Mm -hmm. And you are highlighting those moments. Okay, I'm going to turn it back to you now just to tell us a little bit more maybe about what you've been doing and where you're going and what your dreams are now with after you leave the army because you said i'm going to focus on a film year yeah so they, like we we said before that my journey has been a little bit all over the place so we're following those two things that seem a little bit to be not very similar chemistry and films seem to be on the very far ends of things but not necessarily i think that a film has the power to connect people and share stories and reshape culture, reinvent the world. And in chemistry, in a way, it's also been completely understanding the world as it is in a more like microscopic level. But through the scientific advancements, a lot of changes have happened. And then we're living in an age of climate change and we need to think of sustainability and all that. So definitely uh, the sciences will play a major role too. And I think having the film as a a way to educate and and then having also scientific knowledge it makes sense too. And then I've learned that one of the filmmakers, I think the Lumiere brothers, maybe I'm not entirely sure, but they were chemists, I believe. So there were some like filmmakers in the beginning that were because of the technical aspect of it in the beginning yes. of film. So they were very scientific too. That Thomas Edison and a lot of them that had to play a lot with the technology aspects of film. I had to find a solace in myself to be able to pursue that because, like you said, listening to others that don't understand your journey can be very distracting and even uh, discouraging. For me, in the beginning, it was a little bit like that because I ha I knew I had this film dream, but I also knew I wanted to do it in, in the U.S. I wanted to do it in L.A. I wanted to somehow I wanted to do it for a larger audience. I love uh, Brazilian um, cinema and all that. And I want to revisit it now that I have a little more know-how. But back then, I had very little uh, knowledge to start with. And I didn't have a lot to invest in the beginning. So that's what we're saying. The opportunity for me was the chemistry. And yes. once I took it, that paid off quite quickly and brought me here. And so sometimes you get out of your uh, way a little bit. But when you come back to it, you notice that was your way all along, even though it seemed to be a bit windy and uphill and all that but it's not a straight line always you great point yeah and you're not gonna follow like a script from what everybody else has done so basically like you will figure out your path as you go and then you will for me it's been very unusual so i went from chemistry to film in california as i was working with wine and going back to school finally then i was able to study filming in santa barbara california which is an amazing place for for it yes to be. And then, then I reconnected with that film dream and it made sure that I wanted to give it more time. So I went to film festivals and started connecting with other people there locally. And, and then the pandemic happened and I was unsure if I could do anything with wine at that point because I was working for a very famous uh, sommelier in uh, California that has traveled the world, is very unknown. Uh, and then he was teaching me a lot. And then... Um, I loved it, but the next step was either working in a vineyard or a winery, which would bring a little bit of that chemistry to it. But my dream was calling me to uh, go for it finally. So I decided to finish that film school and then pursue it. But then the pandemic happened. So then again, I had no, I, I didn't know what to do then. And then that's when I came along with the army idea because they needed it. They yes. needed seaburn specialists, which are basically a chemical core branch that is all about protection of troops and civilians in all matters, hazards, materials. So then I remember I have a little bit of this knowledge from the past. Maybe I can bring that back up here now and then apply it. And then being in the army will definitely like doing this uncertain time, give me a little more of a, a security and to be re, redirect, re, reroute. And then that's what happened. It brought me here close to Nashville and then I found the Nikat studio, met you. So I've been back to school, finishing film and biochemistry. 
And then it was all because of this army service period where I've been able to do all this at the same time, which was very tiring. But like I said, it, it's never a straight line. And then here we are now. So I'm on my last year of army service and about to finish school. And then I will have to get some hands-on time and finally get some stuff out the TV shows for NECAT and all that. Yes. And I love the another great tip that you gave that it is not a straight line most of the time to our career. And we have this or to our life dream or whatever you want to call it, because a lot of times we have this plan mm -hmm. and we think it's going to go this way. But you looked at the opportunities that arose instead of just only sticking to your plan. Like when the army needed something, you thought I could do that. And then you exposed yourself to another way to help the world. And I love the thing that you can also now give us a, a world view of Brazil. And there's so many things you can do with your film industry. But you just said, don't expect it to always be um, a straight line to where you're going or a straight path. But in every aspect, if you believe, it'll add something to your journey, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, even the army, yeah. Absolutely. So that was a lot uh, that we were talking about following the signs. And then yes. that's when that becomes important because those have become a small confirmations, a confirmation events that you are on some sort of a right path, if you want to say. Not that there is only one path either, but nope. then you get that confirmation that what you're doing is causing things that are like a cause and effect relationship where yes. whatever you're doing is reaping, reaping sow. You're getting uh, benefits from what you're doing. So those are, I feel like those are nice little pats on the back from the world, from the universe, from going forward and then keep doing what you're doing. And for me, that happened many times. And then sometimes it's easier to see them when time passes, because then you look back and you're like, oh, that was one of those moments. And I, at the time, I didn't realize it so much. But when I was here in my first year, I had a teacher, I took a class, two classes that were not uh, mandatory. That was one of those things like you have to pick it and then you decide it. You have all the free will to decide. And then usually when you have all the free will, it can be really hard, but it's also an opportunity for you to connect with your inner voice and then decide, even if you don't fully understand it, but to exercise that free will towards something because you're giving the chance to pick something and make sure it, it resonates with you, right? So then I picked two classes that year that were not mandatory and one was on wine. I did not know I was going to end up working in the wine industry in California later on. And then the other one was on chemistry education, which I picked based on the past, right? So chemistry education based on what I was doing back in Brazil. Yes. And then funny enough, my professor for that class ended up being like a, an advisor for my dream school back in Brazil in my hometown. So when I went back from the exchange program, I was able to work at the school I dreamed of being as a student. And then I ended up being a substitute teacher there briefly, oh, you know? Yes. So one of those things is you're definitely doing something right because this is not mandatory and here you are. And then you have to find someone in Charleston, South Carolina that works in Salvador, Brazil. What are the odds, right? So you're definitely in the right little group there. And then again, the wine class that I picked just out of interest ended up connecting me to that rum internship I said in Key West where I was there briefly for a, a, a part of the summer working with a distiller and we made amazing rum there in the first legal distillery there. And it, it was really nice being in the on the island and doing all that. And yes. then later on, that wine became a, a sommelier job in California that supported me while I went back to school for film. So you see how it go back on a full cycle. And then those are little signs that you get on the way that Things are working on because they're working out because you're getting those responses, those confirmation feelings. You met, you mentioned, and you are confirming, oh my God, you mentioned inner voice. Listen to that inner voice. Pay attention. And Matthias, that's the, I don't want to say it's the problem, but that's an issue that a lot of us get caught up in uh all the everyday things that, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to go here. I got to go there. And the noise keeps us 
from mm -hmm. knowing, seeing, understanding, and really getting in touch with ourselves. And this is why Hello Self is so important. And I am so grateful that you're sharing the kind of things you're sharing, like the inner voice, because, you know, we might be driving down the road and see a sign that says something about winemaking. We don't know. And all of a sudden, I think that would be fun. But what we do is we just say, oh, that was get back to work, Patricia. You couldn't do that. Instead, we talk ourselves out of it instead of investigating it. And I love something else you did. You you went to film festivals. In other words, it doesn't matter what you do, but you you put yourself in environments where you could get to know and learn. And that even made, oh my God, I love what you're, oh, this is exactly, listen, audience, listen to everything he's talking about, because this is exactly the purpose of this Hello Self podcast. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but I just had to say <laughs> all of these things, you, yeah, we ought to go on the road. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, I love that you're saying, talking about the inner voice and then the title of the podcast, Hello Self. It's definitely that. I like that you said that we will talk ourselves down. And then yes. you know, the idea is that, that you will hear the inner voice or you're going to notice something that you're interested about. And then you have the chance to like either convince yourself, well, tell you something that, oh, no, that's not for me. Or, yeah, what am I thinking about? Whatever. And go back to your routine, your your automatic responses. Or you can say, hello, self. What are you talking about? Yes. Why does it interest you? A lot of times you don't understand. That's what I said. I struggled with that in the beginning because I, I knew I wanted to film a lot. And I also liked chemistry. And then I had those two things going on at the same time that were very uh, not conventional. And then, the, of course, it, it was confusing and a little bit of a... Um, a struggle to understand that I was doing what I was doing was made sense. Let's say that what I was doing made sense. And it, it took some time for me to begin to notice those confirmation uh, moments that convinced me, yeah, th this makes sense. It's working. It's going somewhere. But what I one one of the things like there's a, a quote I read a long time that really resonated with me. And I think you like it. It's uh, called what you seek is seeking you. So I think a lot of that is, is comes with, I'm not a film director, but I like film and I'm, I, I would like to work in film, in the film industry. So I'm going to go seek out events and people and places where I can like, expose myself to that. And then if I, and then I'll see how I feel, number one, right? And then see what happens. And then a lot of times when you do that, you get some sort of response immediately. So that's what I believe in. What you seek is seeking you. You yes. go look for things that you want and then you find out that they're looking for you too there's always like a spot for you there in some sort of environment that you were looking out for they're gonna be right. like oh we have something for you here is they're waiting for you to say hello self and then go for it and then there's right. gonna be something already that has your name on it pretty much if you go for it another thing that's important to remember is that opportunities we look for opportunities but we, I don't believe in sitting and waiting for a dream to happen. I think we have to prepare ourselves too. So even if you believe it in something and you, even if you're not at the highest capacity at the moment, you can still do something that will send out that message that you're willing to work for it. And for me in the beginning was learning English. If I want to, if I'm saying, I'm telling you that I want to go live in another country and I want to be a filmmaker. The most, the first thing you're going to think is what well, language, right? And in, in English right. is, is a requirement, basically. And not the only way to do that, but definitely one of the ways. It's definitely easier than doing it in Portuguese in my native language. So I went and tried to learn English. And it kinda, it's like at least a bridge, isn't it? It's It may not be the answer, but it's a bridge to help mm -hmm. you get to, yeah. And then it shows that you are willing to yes. uh, do something extra for what you're saying that you want to do. And then yes. I think that kind of creates a sort of a chain reaction in the events. And then, of course, you're going to meet other people. And then people can always introduce you to other opportunities, bring you new information. And then things will start from there, rather than if you're waiting in your room and then have that fantasy, that dream. And then you're like, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. That, ah. I, that works out because you need to 
you start something. It's like looking at a match and then waiting for it to ignite. It will not <laughs> ignite on its own. You need to do bring a little bit of chemistry into it. <laughs> yeah, that's a chemistry comment. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great lesson though from a chemist <laughs> to each of us it doesn't matter what you're going in yeah <laughs> <It's> <laughs> probably i like sports so i always say if you don't step up to bat you're never going to hit a home run so <laughs> oh, that's pretty good <laughs> um, because i always uh, played sports and then coached my son in sports so i use a lot of sport but i love that you're right can you ignite something that you want but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so fabulous. Can you, are you open to say where, where you're taking all of this now? In the, you said next year, I'm planning to leave the army. And what is at least your thoughts beyond that moment? And now that we've met at the TV studio, if you want to share that, what are you planning for that? What are some of your dreams and your beliefs and the integration of the film and the chemistry? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love that studio that we met at, NICAT, and I think that's going to be a great place for me to get started and yes. explore different ideas. I love their concept. So I'm coming up with a, a project called Wine O'Clock, which would be basically wine education in a fun way for the, the channel, the public channel in Nashville. So we would bring a little bit to the Music City. There's a concepts about wine. So I see that a lot of people don't like wine publicly, but because they don't understand it. I feel like there's not a lot of information out there. And there, there's some of a prejudice. It's kind of labeled sometimes as a, an expensive outside thing. I think that I want to try to make sure that people can see that wine is for everyone. And then there's a lot of beautiful concepts in wine. It brings communities together. It has the, from the ground, the soil, the practices in the farm and the chemistry side of yeah. it until it finally reaches a bottle or it goes to a restaurant. So it takes a lot of people to make sure you get it, you get it all done. So I think that would be a nice and we're going to make it fun. So it's not like a class or anything. The idea is to make it fun. So people learn little things here and there. And then we meet local people connected to wine and try to guess a wine without having to know what it is. So yes. bring a little bit of that sommelier past into the Nashville and using the film and TV now to capture that. So that, that's I, the first you know, part. I could see you speaking about that too, because uh, yeah, not in an education, but just from a fun point of view, uh, taking what your TV show is about and talking to groups about it they, they have wine festivals every place and we i think we still have one i remember one time i worked at the wine festival but i think oh, oh i i love that idea I, when you told me about that at our very first meeting i thought what a brilliant idea and very different kind of television show that's not educational necessarily. It can be because there are some elements that people will learn about wines. But I love wine. It gives me a migraine headache. So I would like to know when you're doing this, is there anything for those? I, I said, God knew I was going to be a wino. <laughs> <laughs> he, he made that happen. But I love the taste of it. I don't know what it is. I've even, they've even said that there's something in the grapes or in the fermenting of it. I'm going to watch your TV show too. <laughs> I'm excited for that. It's going to be great. Yeah. And the chemistry piece of it could speak to my headache or whatever. Yeah. Does that. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Absolutely. There's a lot of wine out in the market that is uh, altered. So that has a lot to do sometimes with the headache that they have been manipulated to meet a certain level of alcohol or a sweet wine. The wine naturally didn't come out to be as sweet as expected. So they add sugar to it. So yeah. there's a lot of wine that is manipulated. And then there's a lot of natural wine that is naturally sweet wines. that are low intervention, they call it. So we're going to talk about that too there and to make oh. sure that People know they, there's a lot, just like with other beverages, there are, there's some industry practices that sometimes go against the more natural philosophies that initially were the main purpose of wine and everything. Yes. Ah, I'm excited. 
I am excited too. And it's wine o'clock. Right. Yeah, wine o'clock. Yeah, I thought yeah. that would be a little silly, fun name already. It's just started. Yeah, I love it. It sounds fabulous. You can expect this in the coming year from Mateus and, and watch it. We'll have this podcast out there so you can refer back to it and listen to what he's saying in his program. Is if if someone wanted to get a hold of you, uh, are you open to that? And if so, how would they reach you? Like a website or do you have that up yet or will you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Right now I'm only on Instagram and then I'm working on getting a website up and running. So it would be my Instagram, uh, Mateus Doc Colorado. Yeah, so it's M-A-T as in toy, H-E-U-S-C-L-O-R-A. G as in day O. Oh, I know it's a little bit of a mouthful. <laughs> oh, no, that's, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so that's my name and last name. And then, so basically that's where I gather all that stuff. It's still just a way to reach out to me. And as I come up with the, the show and everything, we'll probably get the, the shows on page and get a little more specific about that. But for now, it's just my hub there. <laughs> yeah. Which I have and a that, friend. That's too, good. So it's on, be, yeah. me. It's my friends and personal and also professional. So it's really all in one place. And then I'm, I'm available to chit chat and then anything. Yeah. Or for people just to follow when you make your announcement about sure. the first show. And yeah. um, maybe some of the people might want to be on. I don't know. Are you going to have guests on your yeah, show? Yeah, definitely going to have guests. Yeah, that would be nice too. Yeah, if you want to be in it, just uh, hit me up on Instagram there and then we'll definitely, we're also going to make it into different locations. So it's not going to be constrained by the studio. We're, we're trying to get to wineries and vineyards yes. and then make it a little more, it's going to be dynamic. So it's always going to be a different place, maybe different people. So it is going to be fun. Yeah. So I'm definitely looking for people that want to be a part of it and want to learn doesn't right. have to and be, owners yeah. of restaurants for pairings yes. Mm -hmm. yes i think when i heard you say that i thought this is going to be fabulous and i like the fact that because you take it from the very initial part of winemaking so it helps us learn a little bit more about brazil too right yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that. There's some winemaking in Brazil too. Hopefully at some point I could incorporate that in there, but at first I'm going to stick with the U.S. and the you US. Know, talk about all the grapes from all the countries and their practices. Yes. But we, yeah. To make it more visual, I think we're going to stick with what they're doing at locally at driving yes. distances over here and initially, but who knows? then branch out to New York State and then um, yes. California and then see if we can bring a lot of that, what, what we're known for outside of the country as well. But I love how it brings the, the grapes, you know, how the, the origins, the farming techniques, all of that, all the way through the restaurants, the festivals, the pairings, and then the bougie, that like people call it the bougie moments, but yes. it starts in the farm. It starts really dirty. It's really simple, but also historically, a lot of these are family um vineyards so there's a lot of tradition yes. and a lot of um family work into it yeah i i don't know but i just think it's going to be fabulous because it we don't know we use every day whatever's in front of us we use we go get a bottle of wine and we don't have any idea about the processing can you imagine the conversation after they see your show when somebody's having a glass of wine or they'll know what wines work best with the kind of meal they're eating. I'm sure yeah. that you, yes. So now I see the dance between chemistry uh -huh. and filmmaking. This is totally, yeah. yes. full circle, full circle right there. <laughs> it is. It's so cool. Okay. We've got dot Colorado is your Instagram, huh? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so we will have that out on when we post this out on all the state, all the Spotify and everything. It'll be out there and it'll also be on uh, NashvilleBusiness.com, which comes out of Atlanta. So it's going to be on uh, some other uh, on a radio station as well as we will post it. I will post it on all the social media. You'll get a copy to post it any place you want to maybe help 
people start to see the beginning for you. So maybe, who knows, it'll be on your television (laughs) or a link on there at least. But anyway, thank you so much. Is there anything you want to say in the closing comments about Oh, no, I just want to really say thank you. This is great. You've been a great host. And, and you know, I love the, your idea and your podcast uh, mission. Thank you for having me. And thanks for everybody listening. Don't forget to say hello, self. I love that. It's so catchy. <laughs> and it's so true, though, because we do have to keep a keep an ear out and then keep an eye out and ear out and then listen to ourselves and make sure we don't completely shut down those moments of self-expression that come up now. Oh my gosh, what a way to close it out. Thank you so much. Pay attention to yourself. You're important people and you'll get signs that help you with your purpose and passion in life. And just like Mateus was telling us, keep listening to who you are. He followed that, even though sometimes he even doubted, which you will too, but just keep going. We're going to wind up this podcast today, and I want to thank you so much. I have learned so much from you, and Mm -hmm. I am so grateful that our paths have crossed. And all the tips and strategies that you gave to our audience, thank you very much. We bless you in your future endeavor, and we will all be supporting. So this is Patricia Leonard, host of Hello Self Podcast. And remember what I always say, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming.